Bass players have a weird relationship when it comes to strings. We never change them, we boil them, and for some reason we like them better when they're old and grimy. So it's normal that some myths have been passed around over the years. What's up guys, I'm Oliver and this is 10 myths you probably believe about bass strings. Myth number one. You only need to change strings when one breaks. If you're a beginner you've probably heard this one. It is a common misconception to think you only need to change strings when one breaks. A good set may not break for decades, but that doesn't mean it's still good to play. After a while, strings become dull, lose all their upper end, and kind of feel horribly rubbery and sticky as well. So no, you do not need to change strings only when one breaks, but probably more often than that. Myth number two. Flat wound strings don't teach your frets. When round wound strings were introduced, bass players started noticing increased fret wear on their instruments. Which is true, round wound strings, especially stainless steel round wound strings, probably wear down your frets faster than flat wound strings. But that doesn't mean that flat wounds do not wear your frets. As a matter of fact, I use flat wound strings just as much as round wound strings, but to be honest, I've noticed just as much fret wear on bases that I use with exclusively with flat wounds compared to bases that I use with round wounds. Also, I believe that nowadays they use harder fret material compared to the 60s and 70s, so it's going to take a long time before your base needs a refret. So just use whatever you like. Myth number three. Heavy gauge strings sound better. Most things in music aren't better. They are just different, different compromises, and everyone has their own view of what better is. What might work for you might not work for me and the other way around. Heavy gauge strings will give you slightly more volume and a beefier tone, but with that comes tension and a more compressed, tight sound, as opposed to the looser sound of lighter gauge strings. So experiment and find out what suits you best. Myth number four. Strings sound better once the brightness is gone. So when I was a beginner, literally everyone told me, oh, you have to wait for the brightness to go away. That's when they are truly broken in. Which is kind of true, but once you start losing the high end, it means that the string is starting to become dull. Over the years, I've learned to appreciate and love the higher end new strings have, especially if you play rock and metal. You really want that upper mid range and treble if you want to cut through the mix. Also, if you're recording, the sound engineer will probably kill you if you show up with old strings. We hear you, Glenn, because you know, you can't make something sound good if you don't have a good sound to start with. And if you don't like the brightness of new strings, well, that's why there's a tone control. But look, here's Peggy. She plays guitar. Myth number five. You need flat wound strings on a fretless bass. Another flat wound string myth. This one comes from the common misconception that since you have a smooth fretboard, you also need a smooth string on it so you don't damage it. Well, surprise, surprise, flat one strings also dig into the wood and leave marks just as much as round one strings. So I get you want to preserve your instrument, but at the end of the day, it's a tool and it's subject to wear and tear just like anything else. So just enjoy it like you should. Also, I think round ones sound way better on a fretless bass, but hey, just the guy expressing his opinion on the internet. Myth number six, removing all the strings at once will damage your bass. Um, unless you remove all the strings and leave your bass like that for like three months, nothing bad is probably gonna happen. Nothing bad will reasonably happen in the span of time it takes to remove the strings, clean your fretboard and put new strings on. What you do want is to avoid sudden changes in tension, like don't cut your strings while they're in tune. Don't do that. Myth number seven, you always need to trim new strings. Speaking about cutting strings, every now and again someone posts a photo on social media asking questions about how they can resolve the fact that they cut the string too short. And the truth is, you don't always need to cut it. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever trimmed the G and D strings, especially on Fender style headstocks. The A, E and B strings, they probably need a little trim, but even there it depends. Obviously make sure you have more than enough and taking measurements sometimes doesn't hurt. A good rule of thumb I usually like to use is that the length of the string should at least reach the end of the headstock. Myth number eight, flat wound strings last forever. Yet another flat wound string myth. Flat wound strings undergo the same wear and tear as any other string. They get grimy, they get old and they get dull, just as any other string. And eventually they might even break. So no, they do not last forever, despite the guy in the Facebook group telling you he hasn't changed strings since 1985. Myth number nine, you need a 5-string bass to play a low B. I think it was Billy Sheehan who posted on Facebook a picture of him playing a 4-string bass tuned to B, E, A, D. And when asked why not simply play a 5-string bass, he replied that he prefers the feel of a 4-string bass. So if you want to use a low B string, it doesn't necessarily mean you need a 5-string bass and adjust all of your playing to a wider neck and an extra string. 
you might be far more efficient on a 4-string bass tuned to B, E, A, D. Myth number 10. Boiling your strings will make them new again. Here we are. I know I might get some hate for this one, but hey, it's the internet and everyone gets to express their opinion on it. So boiling your strings will definitely clean them, and you might think they sound like new strings, but that effect will only last a few hours, a day or two at most. You can remove grime and dirt, but you can't undo the physical stress the string has been through. Months, if not years under tension, kinks where the bridge and tuning pegs are, dents where the frets are, just to name a few. Not to mention that the heat from the boiling water also loosens the windings around the strings, which equals to even more dead strings. Bonus myth. Jacko only needed four strings. So this one isn't about Jacko himself, more about all the people who feel the need to say this. Yet somehow it only applies to the number of strings. You never hear people say, Jacko didn't need frets, or Jacko only needed two pickups. Just because one of the most famous bass players of all time used four strings doesn't mean everyone else has to. I'm not a very big fan of this almost cult of personality type of admiration for someone, and I have been guilty of it in the past, but hey, we've all been teenagers. The beauty of music is that everyone gets to be creative in their own way, and when it comes to creativity, there is no right and wrong. Imagine if everyone played four string fretless jazz basses. That would be pretty boring. There is so much variety in music, and obviously you don't have to like everything. Just keep in mind that when you're making bad or nasty comments, you're commenting on someone else's art. It might seem not worth or important to you, but it is for someone else. That's someone else's life you're commenting on. So be nice. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if there are some other myths I didn't mention in my video that people believe. If so, leave them in the comments below. That's all for today, till next time.